Many of us regular people have inevitably been within hearing range of someone saying, if I was really rich, I would X, Y, Z. It's often something intentionally wasteful or indulgent. Well, in the video today, we're looking at some rich people who did things that will put whatever that wishful person was thinking to shame. Number 10. Bono gets his hat. If you've ever felt the sting of last-minute Christmas shopping and having to send presents through overnight delivery, you still will probably never hold a candle to when, in 2003, rock superstar and charity performer Bono spent $1,000 to have a hat that he had, had retrieved from a legal dispute with a former wardrobe employee flown overnight from Italy to him. Bear in mind that this was a hat he had forgotten about for years and was only concerned about so that he could ensure that it wasn't sold off. And this was also a charity performance where you would imagine the $1,000 could have been put to better use. Number 9. An Era of Hiring Hermits When you consider how far the wealthy are willing to go these days to keep the poor away, it's almost impossible to imagine that for a period during the early 19th century, well-to-do Europeans were hiring people to live by themselves, cut off from human interaction, in little homes on their estates. One of the best stories of this is Charles Hamilton, who had a big tree fort built on his property and hired a hermit to live in it. The best part of the story is that the guy who was hired for the job, he only lasted three weeks. Number 8. Francis Edgerton's Dinners Back during the years when famine was a regular occurrence all over the world, i.e. pretty much anywhere pre-20th century, Edgerton still managed to hold some nice dinners, even if they did fly in the face of Mother Nature. Meaning his dinner parties consisted entirely of himself and packs of dogs at the table. Dogs that wore special shoes and jackets and had servants attending to them. If the dogs misbehaved, they were sent to the servants' dining room. Number 7. Hamad bin Habdan al Nahan name. Yes, this would be a pretty expensive name. It's long to engrave, print, and it's hard to fit on name tags, and it's probably very expensive to carve into the ground in letters large enough to see from space. Yep, this member of Abu Dhabi's royal family has indeed spent untold amounts to have Pakistani, Bangladeshi, and probably laborers from every other poor country dig his name into the ground. The best you can say about this is that he had the restraint to not have his full name written or to use the Comic Sans font. Number 6. The Rough You've seen it before in dozens of pictures of people from the 16th and 17th centuries, but what is the deal with those excessive, uncomfortable-looking collars that people wore back then? Well, the aesthetic choice behind it was to separate the body from the head so that the head would be judged more on its own aesthetic values, like putting a lamp on a plate or a dolly. Yes, in an era where peasants wanted to rebel for religious, financial, and political reasons, the upper class were going around wearing outfits that essentially said, this is what my head would look like if you cut it off. Number 5. Timothy Dexter's Statue Collection Given that by his own insane admission in his autobiography, which is most famous for not containing a single bit of punctuation, Dexter lucked his way to wealth. Interestingly, he also insisted on being called Lord, even though the lack of monarchy in the country made it so that he couldn't possibly be one. So to impress everyone, instead, he had 40 statues erected in his front yard of luminaries ranging from Napoleon Bonaparte to George Washington to himself. Actually, there were two statues of himself because apparently he was incredibly modest. Number 4. Jeffrey Bolkai's Life So, the Minister of Finance from 1996 to 1998 for the oil-rich country of Brunei, and you're also a member of the nation's royal family. Then you decide to steal an alleged $14.6 billion dollars worth of money. So what do you do with it all? Well, how does the following sound? Buy a 747 and retrofit it so it can be just used for polo horses. Buy a cruise ship and name it Tits, and lifeboats on it named Nipple 1 and Nipple 2. Buy a bunch of custom-made, ultra-realistic statues of yourself having sex that doesn't flatter you in the least. Assemble a harem, including Gillian Lauren, who can go write a bestseller about you. Number 3. Princess Diana and Prince Charles' Wedding Remember how everyone would have a complete cow over how wonderful it was that Princess Diana raised money for charity? Well, no wonder she felt the need to raise money for those less fortunate, because it would take a long time to make up for the amount of money that was spent on her wedding day. The wedding cost, adjusted for inflation, about $110 million. Then, 15 years later, it all got flushed away in a divorce. Sorry, but for $110 million, the British government should have been legally allowed to hypnotize them into only loving each other and then giving them the reverse eternal sunshine of the spotless mind treatment to ensure that they would never ever get divorced. Number 2. Norwood Young's Uninspiring Movement An R&B singer from the 90s, he decided that just what his garden needed was a statue of Michelangelo's Davids. In fact, he wanted 20 of them. When a bunch of people protested, he managed to make news for what he did, and he made a music video about the whole mess called Stand Up For Something. There's not much evidence that people united together to defend the right of a millionaire to keep millions of dollars worth 
worth of statues on his property. Number 1. Jim West's Direct Approach Texas oil baron Jim West, who lived from 1903 to 1957, accrued a fortune of only $10 million, which, even adjusted for inflation, doesn't come close to Jeffrey Balkai's or Princess Diana's fortunes. But he more than made up for it with a lack of style. In restaurants, at parties, at pools, he had a habit of throwing handfuls of silver dollar coins around to watch people scramble for them. He had pants made with extra big pockets to hold enough coins for proper coin throwing parties. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Do not forget to subscribe. We got brand new videos every day. Also, when you're subscribing, hit the bell icon so you find out when we put out a new video. Also, why not check out my other channel called Geographics? It's a geography-based channel. I think if you like this stuff, you'll like that as well. And as always, thank you for watching.